Okay, this is the third video for electrostatics. This is part three. We're going to look at electric fields, like what you see going on right here. Uh, before we begin, let's go ahead and do some intro. Uh, just a reminder from a previous lesson. Just take a second and do this. Make sure you pause the video and then come back and listen to, to the answer to check your work. So if you have two charges, one was uh, the one on the right stationary, take a look at that positive, and that positive is going to be attracted to that negative, opposite the track, attract, and so therefore you would have a motion to the right. This next one, um, you have a force of 100 newtons felt between two charged objects initially 5 meters apart. What's it going to become when it's 20 meters apart? So you have to take a look at the after divided by the original, and you find out that you have four times the distance, and then you have to take that number four times the distance and put it into a rule once. Make a ratio with everything up down the bottom, that being the old or one times the original, so you put in once for everything. And then on the top one, you're going to change the distance to four times what it was. And so 111 over 4 squared, you're going to end up getting 1 16th times. And then you just have to multiply that by the original value, which was 100, and you get 6.25 newtons as your answer. This next one, you're going to take a look and you're going to see these are all interactions that are separated. They're not interacting with each other. Whatever this charge 2 is, we know that charge 2 is that we're just going to take it along. And so if 1 is repelling 2, 2 is going to be positive. So let's take that positive, put it here. And P, that positive is attracting this one, so it has to be negative. So we'll take that negative, put it here. That negative is attracting, and that should be contacting a positive. And then let's put that positive here, and then positive repels positive, and actually all the answers here would be positive, two, four, five of for, for the answers here. Now when we draw electrical fields, we're always going to draw arrows that are going to be pointing away from the positive. So we don't have to know this is positive. If it's an electric field, the arrows are always going to be drawn, drawn away. And if the more, the stronger the field, the more electrical field arrows we're going to draw. So that just represents the difference. So the spacing of the lines, these, these are spaced less, so it's a stronger charge. And when you think about this, anytime you're going to think about the direction of the electrical field, if you put a positive, if I just dropped a positive in that electrical field, it's going to be traveling away from this positive. So the direction we draw those arrows are always going to be away from the positive. So if this was a negative electrical field and we placed a positive just right there, a, a, a proton, it would be attracted. And so therefore, the electrical fields are drawn inwards here. When we have two point charges, so this positive and this negative, point charges that aren't allowed to move, they're going to stay in their place. We put a positive charge right there. It's going to follow this flow towards the negative. And that's how you draw it. It's always going to be away from the positive and towards the negative. If you had two negatives, you're going to have... It kind of shows a repulsion here versus an attraction. Uh, these are going to these would like to be attracted to each other, but they can't move. But any positive charge placed in that field would be attracted to the negative and pushed away from the positive. Whereas here, they're always going to want to get away. It wants to get away from any positive. We want to go towards this this negative, and it also would kind of interact depending on where it's located. It's going to follow if you just dropped a positive charge anywhere in here. It's going to follow this. Track. So if I drop a positive here, it would follow this track in towards the negative, the negative point charge. Here you have positive. If you drop a positive in right there, anywhere in here, it's going to follow these arrows that you see, going away from the the positives. It doesn't want to get close to this positive, so it's going to follow. It's going away here. It's going to not want to go that way, and it will follow this path away from that positive and and I can drop those positive. this just represents me dropping positive charges anywhere so these are all positive charges and what which direction they would flow if I placed them there okay and so here take a second draw what you think these would look like pause the video then come back and check your answers and this is what they would look like so weak charge less arrows stronger charge more arrows um, both positive, so they're going to be arrows going to be facing away. Negative, you're going to have arrows facing in. Less again if it's weak. Um, and then when we start seeing interactions over here, always away from the positive towards the negative. And over here, always away from the positive, and they also don't want to go towards that positive. And this one would actually probably go around switch around if I wanted to connect the dots they would they would make their way to the negative at some point in time as they're trying to get away from this positive you put a positive charge in any of these locations 
So let's look at the electrical field math. There's two equations we're going to use. We have E for electrical field, and the unit here, we haven't seen this before, is going to be Newton Coulombs, because force is Newtons and charge is Coulombs. And we can solve for electrical field with force and charge, or we can solve for electrical field with charge and distance. And so we just have to make a Givens list and go off of the, the equations, the problems that you see here that we're about to do, and that's going to lead you into which equation you're going to use. So make a Givens list and just find out, are you, are you given a distance or are you given a force? And either one of those will allow you to solve for electrical field. But if we're given this one, we're going to have to use 9 times 10 to the ninth this number right here, um, that's going to be the same as for Coulomb's law, the K, the, the electrostatic constant. And therefore, we're also going to always be dealing with air when we're talking about any sort of insulator uh, around the charge causing the electrical field. Okay, what's the electrical field at a location where, where, where uh, 1.30 times 10 to the negative 19th Coulomb piece of lint experiences a force of 3.2 times 10 to the negative 9th as it floats? We're looking for electrical field. We have our charge. We have a force. We have an equation that this leads us to. Plug in the values, and then there's your answer. So I didn't say this, but it's always try these. Make a given list, try it, pause the video, then come and take a look if you're watching the video um, as you for your lesson, and not just reviewing from before or looking over something. So we had 2.5 times 10 to the 10 to the 10th Newton coulombs. What's electrical field? 1.5 meters. So we have electrical field, 1.5 meters uh, from a charge of this. So we're, there's our Q, and therefore we're going to have to use that one that needs a K2. So 9 times 10 to the ninth. Here's your equation. Plugging in all the values. Once you plug those in, you're going to get 22.8 Newton Coulombs as your electrical field. And if you want to go even beyond that, it's from a positive charge. So this would be, we want to put a direction to it we would put away from it. So I ask you some of these questions in the, in the homework or in the problem set pretty soon. So always, if it's positive, the, the direction is going to be away. If, if it's negative, the direction is going to be towards. So here's a video. Um, I'll put a link if you're, if you're on my class page. I'll put a link um, so that you can click on it. I want you to watch this. It just talks about shielding. It's pretty cool. Um, you, see, you see one of the largest uh, um, Van de Graaff generators that's going to be used to zap a car with a person inside of it. And so he's inside the car, about to get zapped by lightning. It's really cool talking about shielding. But what you'll see shielding, when you have a conductive sphere or conductive casing around an object, inside the sphere you have zero electrical field. So you don't have the interactions. If a person was outside of this with a cell phone, and this thing got zapped by lightning, the cell phone would be destroyed, would be fried. Whereas if you had the cell phone inside, the, the sphere, the cell phone would be just fine um, because of the, the shielding that an uh, electrical sphere would do. And that's also your car. It doesn't have to be completely. You can have a window, um, you know, in your car, and it's enough where the charge, anytime you got zapped here, the charge would go around, around, around. It's not going to zap into the into the, the car. So if there's enough of a conductor leading your leading around the sphere, the any, any, anything inside would be, be fine, would be protected. And so there's a little zapper zapping the car. Um, true or false, car tires protect you from being struck by lightning. I know a lot of people have said that. It's it's a myth. Um, shielding protects you. This, this little area, this little rubber piece of tire right here is not enough to stop the lightning from wanting to hit the car. It, the, it, the lightning would hit the car. It's the shielding, the traveling around the car, around the car, away from the person to, that's going to save this person. Here's another, more proof of shielding. So this guy's getting zapped by a pretty massive uh, Van de Graaff generator. And he's fine. Of course, he's going to feel the heat. He's probably sweating right now. He's got earphones on so he doesn't go deaf. Um, but he's being protected because the charge is going around to the ground. So time to work on the problem set. So work on the problem set, do the entire problem set, then come here to check your answers. Uh, once again, pause the video. So here are the charges, so the point charges. We, we I mentioned this in the lesson, so I'm not going to go over this again. Um, also, the direction always paint points away from negative towards the positive charge. In this question, you're looking for electrical field. You have a charge. You have a force. So it's going to lead you to this equation. Plugging in all the values, you're going to get an answer of 2.0 times 10 to the 10th Newton Coulombs of electrical field. 
In this question, you're given a, a charge, you're given a distance, and therefore you're going to have to um, just give, the, it's not going to give you the K, you have to know it's K, because you're doing this equation. Plugging in all the values, you're going to get 6,750 6, Newton Coulombs away. And the way, once again, because it was a, a positive charge, you're, a positive charge is allowed to move, would always move away from the positive charge. So that's where this away comes from. If this, this charged object is going to cause any other positive charge in its field to move away, and the way that you would state this is the direction that the, a positive charge would, would travel is going to be the direction that we just commonly state as the as electrical field direction. So this problem, we have a charge, we're, we're given an electrical field, we're asked for force, so it's going to get you back to this equation. Uh, it's asking you for F, so F is on top, so you can multiply out the Q. When you multiply out the Q, you get F equals EQ. Plugging in the values right there, you would get this answer, 0 0.0048 newtons. So next question, you're given a charge. You're given a, um, and this charge is going to be electrons, so it's going to be negative. Another thing I mentioned that I should have mentioned earlier, um, we're not going to use negatives for our charges here as well. Not that it really matters as much. We're just going to go with what we, we did before. Just look at the, look at the, if you're trying to decide what direction a field's going to be, you look at the charges creating it, and in this case, it would have been going, a positive charge would go towards a negative. So in this electrical field, it would be directed towards. So here we have our charge. Here we have our, our force. We have a, uh, E we're looking for, plug in our values, and we get 1.875 times 10 to the 13th Newton Coulombs. So the last problem here, we have an E, we have a Q, and I did put a positive, let's pretend like it's not there. Um, really doesn't truly matter here. The magnitude is going to be the, the most important thing. We have a distance, so therefore we're going to have to have a K because we're going to this equation. Plugging in all our values, we get 450 Newton Coulombs towards as our answer.